but to take God at his word. All these triumphant, I am I am the warrior God who has conquered all things, yeah. and they all belong to me, not not in the future, but now. Right? I'm and getting it, all excited um, here, man. There you Welcome back to Eschatology Matters. Uh, I'm Josh Howard, and I'm here joined with Tim Bashong. Tim, thanks for joining me again on one of these uh, short little conversation, kind of flyover um, introductions to a topic um, in eschatology. What I was hoping we could talk about uh, today was uh, optimism versus pessimism within eschatology. Um, optimism, yeah. um, a, a hopefulness, a confidence, maybe even we could describe it as um, a security in our eschatology versus a pessimism, a downtroddenness, a defeatedness, all those things like that. Um, walk us into this, if you could, for me, Tim, just kind of introduce our thinking into, um, because I, 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 I'll, I'll put this shot across the bow at the front end. I think that the majority of Christian eschatology within the United States, I'm going to make it real specific just to our context, <laughs> but within the last few decades has been dominated by pessimism. I'm, I'm just going to throw that personal subjective opinion out there. What, what are your thoughts on this? Yeah, and I think I think I'm with you there. Um, having grown up in a uh, 60s, 70s, Midwestern evangelical church, the default position was, of course, dispensationalism. And the, uh, the idea that in each of the ages in which God works uh, with man and makes a covenant with man, mm. at the end of each one of those is abject failure. And, okay, you, you yeah. know, that, that's not really a, a, a thought that makes you want to get up in the morning. Although, to be honest, many of the uh, stalwarts of the 70s and 80s, you know, politically speaking, were in fact dispensationalists. They believe right. Jesus could come back at any second. Uh, the old joke when, when I was growing up was Jesus is returning soon. Look busy. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, there yeah. Were, but I, it, I'll never, I'll never forget, you know, reading some other literature that was outside of that dispensational framework and then approaching my spiritual leaders at the time with this. And, and they would nod their heads for a while and then say, Oh no, 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 we can't hope to ever have that kind of influence. Uh, the Bible says that things are always going to go from bad to worse. We can only expect to be rescued out of this sin sick world. Mm. Now, okay, on a pragmatic level, that's not going to help build for the future. But on a biblical level, that's even tougher for me now. Here I am, how many how many years into taking Christ at His word and and living uh, the Christian life mm. and having studied the Bible. It just doesn't add up anymore to me. Um, okay. the, the promises that God made to Israel in the old covenant now being fulfilled to the church. And those promises were always on the up and up. Right. Covenant faithfulness. Yes, we're, we're talking about your relative sure. obedience or disobedience. But to take God at his word and then say, oh, but by the way, all of that, all of those laws and principles in the Old Testament, that's irrelevant. Jesus right. has come. Now it's all about love and suffering. Right. Well, there's going to be suffering. There's no question about it. Uh, we're not denying that. We're denying that Jesus is defeated in human history let in me, his, in his jump, mission. Let me jump in there, Tim. And yeah, cause th that point, that point you're hitting right at the home of what, what we want to want to kind of flesh out right here. So, so when, when I think of the optimism versus pessimism in that regard, let's, let's just lay the cards on the table. So you mentioned dispensationalism. I, I would say that, that most people would associate dispensationalism with the belief that things are going to trend downward and get worse. And the church in essence is going to be kind of defeated or not, at least not victorious in this age. Again, right. these are broad brushstrokes, but let's just put that out there. Yep. Um, historic premillennialism um, in a different vein, not the same as dispensational premillennialism, but at the same time, historic premill is going to look for these promises to be fulfilled in a future messianic kingdom, not now, not in what we would consider the right. church age, right? Um, Ah mill is a little bit harder. Now you, you were describing post mill, so I'll do that one uh, first or not describing post mill, but we could just say post mill, um, the expectation that Christ will be victorious through the church in this age. In other words, that um, when Christ says that all authority belongs to him in heaven and on earth, that that will actually manifest itself in this age. Yes. Fair, fair enough yes. for a broad brush. Okay. Amil, Amil, I would say is a little, a little harder in this regard because you have um, Amil, uh, kind of an optimistic, you know, this is the, the general terms, optimistic Amil and pessimistic Amil. So 
There yeah. are some within Amil who would say, no, everything will trend downward and it will, in essence, look a lot like defeat. But then you have others who have a much more optimistic upturn um, of, of, of a perspective. So Amil is a little bit of a mixed bag, I would say, in that regard. But but what you were describing, Tim, and this is this is what this is what I want want to really kind of hone in on is is taking seriously the claims of Christ. Um, it, it really started changing the way I read the New Testament when I read the things that Christ said, when he said that all authority belongs to me in heaven and on earth, when he said, I've defeated all the rulers, powers, and authorities in this world, when he said, I've evicted the ruler of this world, like all these triumphant, I am I am the warrior God who has conquered all things, yeah. and they all belong to me, not, not in the future, but now. It changed the way I read the New Testament, right? I'm and it, getting all excited here, man. There you I need a pulpit. The, the, but it changes the way you look at it, right? Like when you talk so yes. when you talk about optimism, pessimism, we're not talking about like what we think you should feel. We're talking about what is right. the tenor of what scripture says. Right. 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 And and so then take take what you just said about all of those uh victory language. Right. And not spiritualize it. Mm. make it about everything mm. in heaven on earth under the earth every one of those knees bows to jesus in a very real sense mm. um in fact as i mentioned in the in the uh, earlier podcast i'm preparing from the middle of romans 8 we're getting to all creation groaning for release all right. creation wanting to be set free from the curse that took place because of adam's sin right i don't think those are those are just ethereal out there things i think it means the mineral deposits are going to just all of a sudden make themselves known the insane amount of energy that is available but because of the fall we're so wicked i was just talking to a brother of mine he said you know you said in one of your sermons sin makes you stupid boy is that true well sin makes mankind stupid and even as we try to push our way into the stratosphere with our inefficient rockets and all that stuff the significance of culture as as informed and ruled by Jesus, I don't think we have a clue as to what is is actually possible because of the the noetic effects of sin that is you know fallen in Adam. Even our rational fa uh, faculties are broken. All right. And so wh when I say in hi in history, Jesus victorious in history, I mean until that resurrection of the dead. Right. Because, okay, and and so, that's because of our common structural setup with Amil and post mill. OK, yeah. And so and so we could we could say this, though, and 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 trying to keep this one kind of short because yep. this is man, yep. we could we could talk a while about this. This is good stuff. But but, yeah, but we could at least say we could at least say between Amil post mill. Amil might tend more toward a spiritualized fulfillment in some of those regards, at least historically with with Amil and post mill may have more of an expectation that spiritually and however you want to define it, but this worldly, as in we can expect culture itself um, to be impacted, yeah. the nations of this world, those type of things. Would that be a kind of kind of fair generalization of the two? A absolutely. Okay. As soon as you start bringing culture and politics into it, civil authorities, that's when some people melt down. And I'm like, I okay. don't know why. I don't know why not. Okay. You but know, if, Jesus but is either, king, right? <laughs> exactly. And, and, and e with either one of those, we would still encourage at least <laughs> be like baseline, optimism in our eschatology i would think that would be a, yeah. good, a good just biblical baseline is if you're you know i'll just go out on a limb if your eschatology is not optimistic i'm not so sure it's biblical uh, because the, yeah. the 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 tenor of the message of the new testament is not defeat that's right um, suffering yes persecution yes but not defeat that's right that's right good and i and i would also say you you you, you can't be a pessimistic uh theologian and say well i'm optimistic because jesus wins in the end anyway Mm. Uh, that's, that's kind of like, that's a given. Everybody mm. thinks that now between okay, yeah, now yeah, yeah. and the resurrection, it's kind of a, that's one of those devices I believe is used by, <laughs> gotcha. by my friends. That's all right. No big topic. I appreciate the overview though. This is, this is good. Just kind of settle that out there. Um, as always, um, we, we welcome, you know, more questions and stuff like that. Um, perhaps we could follow up on this later, but Tim, thanks for the overview and thanks for walking through it with me. Good to be here, man.